everybody and welcome to the very first episode of Beans Workshop. Today we're going to build a tin can stove. Here's mine in the corner. I've been using it for over a year and it's been very reliable and very robust. It can take a beat in a very very lightweight, they cost nothing and they're easy to make. So we're going to have a crack at that today. And welcome back to this first episode of Bean's Workshop. I'm Bean from Team Mountain Muppets and today, like I said, we're going to be building a tin can stove. Just like this one. This is mine, as I said before. Okay, so we'll start with part one. What you're going to need. Now, first, two beer cans. Any old beer cans, it doesn't matter. If they're thinner wall, it tends to work better, it's easy to cut them. They need to be empty, so I hope you have as much fun emptying them, emptying them as I did. Next up, a pair of gloves. Very important. These cans, when you cut them, they're sharp, they can, they, you can get hurt. So wear gloves, keep safe. You need a steel rule or straight edge that you can cut along later. You're going to need a pair of sharp scissors. Paper scissors will be fine as long as they're fairly sharp and they're able to cut the tin of the can. This, this is a tool I use for punching the jet holes in the top of the stove. You can use a punch pin for this. I just have this so I use it. You need a permanent marker, something you can mark, mark your cuts with. A standard trimming knife, pick them up from the local DIY store with a sharp blade. You'll also need one more sharp, one more Stanley knife blade, which I have attached to my rig here. Um, you can also use a book and trap the blade between the um, between the pages because I only make this because I make a few of these stoves and it tends to make things slightly easier. Aluminum foil tape. This makes them look nice seals it up, make sure fuel can't leak too much. It's yeah, it's it's fairly expensive, it's about five pounds a roll from your local DIY shop. So if you're only making one stove that can make this expensive. If you're gonna make quite a few, it's a bargain. And one cutting board of some description. Something you can cut on so you don't damage what you're working on. Okay, part two, we get to making the stove. So, I'm going to get my rig out. You can also do this with a book by trapping the, um, like I say, by trapping the blade between the pages. There's a video of this just up here at the moment to show you what I mean. But I'm going to be using my rig today because it's far easier. Let's get a few bits and bobs. So, you need your two beer cans. These are going to make your stove. What we're going to do, we're going to score around the bottom. We're going to score around the bottom of one can, top and bottom. We're going to score around the bottom of another can, but just around the bottom. But first, and a lot of other internet videos will tell you they'll, they'll do this later, but we're going to cut around the inside rim of this 
and score all the way around there with a knife being very, very careful because this is probably the most dangerous part of this job. So we're going to score around there and then we're going to cut across, across the centre of this. We're going to score it in and then we're going to punch back through and we'll be able to fold the four pieces out and remove this piece of metal here. So we'll get to that. Cutting right in the corner here, all the way around. Very carefully. You don't want to slip doing this. Just take your time. Score around. You might have to do this a couple of times, it does take a little while. So I'll just get this the way I want it and I'll catch up with you in a sec. Okay, I'm fairly happy I've cut around the rim there and it should break away pretty easily. Next, we're going to make the cross cut across the can. Now you notice I haven't been wearing gloves, that is not a very good idea. Um, but they don't call us Team Mountain Muppet for nothing. Wear your gloves while you're doing this, it's much safer. I, like I say, I'm a Muppet. Okay, so once we've scored that in across and all the way around the rim, so you've got across and you've gone around the rim, um, then I'm going to punch the centre with the blade, being very gentle. You do have to put on a, a reasonable amount of pressure. I know it's not liking doing it. No so. I've sliced into the can, made a slip there, and now I'm going to go the other way. Now I'm just going to finish off those cuts just to the rim. Try not to pull this through any further because you don't want to cut into this lip here. That would be bad. Okay. So cut those right out of the lip like that and put the knife away again for a moment. Right, now this part can be very, very sharp. So you've got to be a bit careful. But if you push just on these, just gently, you'll push down. Just work them a little bit and they will pop down just like that. Like I said, I do this, I do this first because it's easier. I find I've got a whole can to work with while I do this part rather than having to mess around with a sharp edge down here while I'm trying to hold the can still cutting this out. Break the pieces off, so perfect. So we've now got a can with a big hole in it. 
Now we'll get to cutting the cans. Okay, and now for cutting the cans. So first I'm going to take the one I cut a hole in. It's the most sensible to start with. So, like I say, you can either use the book method, which I'll show you again just up here, or like I'm doing, I'm going to use my rig, my jig. I've got this set. Thirty-five millimeters. So, if you want to make one the same size as this, you'll need a blade thirty-five millimeters. For height, you can make them different heights, different depths. I find this is the most useful size for everything that I do. Uh, you may want a bigger fuel capacity. You may want a smaller snow stove. It's okay for making maybe one cup. It depends what you want it for. Okay, so now we'll get to cutting the can. So all we do to cut the can we score, keeping the can flat and just running around the blade to score the can and while keeping it completely flat. And this will ensure we've got a perfect cut. Try not to cut right through, you don't want to do that at this stage. the can and now I'm going to do the same for the top of this can making sure all the time to keep the can flat on whatever you're working on. You want a good level, clean, easy to work with the area. You just score this around just like so. Right, I'll get these scores done perfectly and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've scored both cans. So I don't need my jig anymore. I can put that away and put the blade away so that it's safe. Now, the method for cutting into the can. I'm going to take your blade and on your score line, just allow it to cut along your score line. Just like that. You've just made a hole. Now the next bit can take a bit of practice to get used to doing this, but if you just put pressure along your score line. Just a little bit there that broke off, but I can remove that easy enough. And I can clean it and clean this up just a little bit, and there we go. So I'll crack on and make these two break and these two cuts, and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so we've got the um, can cut. We've got the top and bottom of our stove now. We've also now managed to retrieve the inner wall. 
and what we should have left over is a long top to a can and a short top to a can and that's just going to sit there for a moment but I'll get rid of it in a minute. So, what we want to do now is create the inner wall of our stove, which creates the vaporisation chamber for the fuel. So this is an alcohol stove we're building, I call it a tin can stove, but it's basically an alcohol stove. You can put um, stove alcohol in there and it'll, it, it'll, it'll make you a brew or cookie dinner. So, now I'm just going to cut straight up. There. And now, along the sides of cans, you tend to find a little mark just in the um, wrapper that's per no, just in the paint that's perfectly straight. Now we want to cut. You could have done this before. I do it now. And we'll cut perfectly along that line to get a perfect edge on this. Just follow that line as carefully as you can. Perfect. Okay, so next we're going to make the inner wall for our stove. Now, I know my cuts were 35 millimeters, and I know that the distance between the top of the paint and the bottom, the bottom of the paint of the can and the bottom of the can is roughly 10 millimetres. So I'm going to cut my inner wall to 45 to 43 millimetres, one millimetre alone for the aluminium of the can. So, to take my steel and I'm going to mark 43 and again at this end at 43 then superb our steel rule between those two marks take out our utility knife And just score along there and then we should be able to take this out so what we're going to try and do is just fold it along that line now like so, you fold it over and it comes off. Perfect. So now we have the start of the inner wall of our stove. Okay, so we've got our inner wall. And what we want to do is take the bottom of our stove one would be um, solid bottom and we're just going to drop that into there and now I'm just going to mark and if you can see this just as the two pieces join together I'm just going to mark both sides, inside and out. More than 10 millimetres from either end. So anywhere in the middle, but just don't be too close to an edge. Right, so we can fold that out, so we've got a mark there and we've got a mark there. Now, at these marks, what we need to be doing we need to get our tape measure out again 
Now I know this is 43 millimetres, so half of that would be, well, 21 and a half. So I'm going to line myself up quite well there. No, we'll say 22. We can go 22. And then we make that mark. Now, on the other end, we want to transfer the mark from the outside just to inside. And then again, we want to mark. Now, this one wants to be on the opposite side. So now we want to be going 23 millimeters up towards that line, if you know what I mean. Like that. Now also along what is going to be the bottom of your stove, we're going to mark some just three triangles on the bottom that are fairly evenly spaced. Now I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to cut down those lines very carefully, only going to the very edge of the line. Just with the scissors. As you see, it cuts quite easily. I'm also going to remove these triangles I've cut in. important. You really shouldn't forget them. The stove will not work without them. Okay, so I've cut the three triangles and both lines. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring these two together, like so. Now you can rub out the black marks from inside it or whatever. They will burn off, it doesn't matter. But now we should find that that triangles down fits perfectly in into the bottom of there, into the bottom of our stove. And that's exactly what we wanted. So next up, I mean I've been fairly lucky here because my can's already been pretty crimped by the damage I did to it earlier. But what you want to do is you just want to try and crimp in this can. and make sure there's nothing on the bottom can to stop the top can from sliding inside because that's what we're going to do now. We're now going to assemble the stove. And we're going to, this can be tricky, but you basically want to get the top of the stove to slide inside the bottom of the stove. Make sure the inner wall can sit into the rim of the top can, of the top of the can. You've got to make sure this rim, this inner wall seats properly. It's also fairly important. And then we just push them together. We 
making final adjustments and it's okay it's together You've got your okay guys we've got our stove together pushed it in in a wall sat it's inside the lip at the top and the bottom and we've got the um, triangles down in the bottom of the stove so next job is to wrap it and seal the tape so all we want to do is run the silver tape around and we want to cut it off just a little bit long. Just like that. Okay. So the next job we want to make sure our silver tape's long enough. want it we measure up our stove with our tape and we want the tape to come just above the paint line just above this isn't hugely scientific it doesn't matter too much if you get it right Trim that off with the scissors as well. So we end up with a piece of tape just right for the stove. Okay, so now we've got our piece of tape, we've got our stove. So now we we'll to peel our tape. It's always fun. This stuff doesn't peel that easily. There we go. Okay, so when we put our tape on, what we want to do is want to line up our tape, hoping it's got a good line cut in it. And line it up with a straight line on the can so that we can line our tape up so that it will run on straight. Because we don't want it to run on at the angle and we'll see where we are like my knees. and it just helps to seal it, covers up some rough edges and just makes it look better. Now just mould it in around the bottom there, so it pulls in, and just seals it all up and just finishes it off nicely. Just like that. And the same around the top, just fold all of this extra in. Like I said, it just protects you from the most sharp edges on the outside of the can and just finishes it off and makes it look fairly professional. Excellent. Okay, so now we've got our tape on. We've got to mark the holes for the jets. Now, you can measure this up. There are templates you can download online. There's loads of ways to do this. Me, I just mark there and then right on the other side do the same at the sides then you can go in the middle of these like so and then in the middle of all of these as well and you should end up with 16 reasonably well spaced marks ready for you to punch the holes Right, so it's a bunch of holes, like I said, I have this, which I don't know where it came from, but I have a pointed tool with a handle, which does make this a little easier. You can use a drawing pin, you can use a punch pin, but you will really have to push it to get it through. 
um, but it'll go, it's easy enough. So all we want to do is we go to the hole and we just punch the hole. Being careful not to push anything from the inner wall of the stove. We just want to pierce down so that we're getting jets in between the two walls. Right, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've punched the holes and that's it. You pour alcohol in the centre, you light it, you leave it a couple of minutes, it'll warm up, these jets will start to run, it'll work like a proper little stove. It's perfect. Um, what we're going to do with this stove is in a week or so, going to run a stove comparison um, between an alcohol stove, a gas stove and a solid fuel stove to see which one's... Um, how long it takes them to boil water, we'll do a comparison between boiling times, comparison between fuel costs and prices, uh, stove prices, weights, because, I mean, obviously this is extremely lightweight whereas a gas stove is not so light but the fuel tends to be a little lighter so it's we'll, we'll have a look at that and it should be interesting. Um, so, thank you very much for watching the first episode of Beans Workshop, and please like and subscribe with the button down in the corner um, to Team Mountain Muppets. We'd appreciate your support.